All right. Well, we are on a uh, on location interview. It's been a little while, but we are at Hebe Beauty Bar uh, with owner and nurse injector Kendra Newman and nurse injector Samantha Stacy. Uh, first of all, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having us here. All piled in here. We have a coworker, Aaron Lund, uh, Dustin. Welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, My thanks. Uh, and, cool. and the athlete Kevin Strybosch, who we, the youngest guy we found out needs the most work. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, thank you for having us and. And uh, yeah, maybe just first off, tell us a little bit about Hebe Beauty Bar, uh, the history and what you do. Okay, awesome. Um, So yeah, Hebe Beauty Bar. I started with the name Hebe. It's the Greek goddess of the fountain of youth or youthfulness. So I thought, okay, that's... (laughs) I was like, that's kind of fitting. And also, you always kind of want your business name to be short and easy and everybody remembers it. So Hebe is pretty easy. People are like, oh, it's Hebe, Hebe, right? Um, So that's kind of why I came up with the name. I've been a nurse, I think, for nine-ish years. I can't even remember. When I was um, working at the hospital neurology stroke unit, I kind of realized floor nursing probably isn't going to be my forever gig. So I took a course in 2017 for Botox and fillers. And then it just kind of just kept going. I really, really loved the industry. So I started working. Red Deer was pretty much unheard of to do Botox and filler in 2017. So I actually had to work in Calgary for about three, three-ish years before I felt competent enough to come out here and uh, open my own industry or my own business. So then after that, um, we've been here for about two and a half, almost three years. And that's how long Sam's also been with us. So yeah. yeah. And I just begged her <laughs> to take me in. Her husband um, was actually friends with me when I was like 18. And then she reached out and was like, Hey, can I shadow you? Can I shadow you? And then she just kept on being like, Oh, I'm just going to come. I'm just going to come. And she just kept coming. And then she's like, when are you going to open your own place? When are you going to open your own place? And I'm like, Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, she's stuck with me. <laughs> yeah. And it's good. <laughs> so great job, obviously risk risking, you know, starting a new business and taking that risk. Um, you guys have been doing a great job. I hear, hear about this and see it on social media and, and now being in here, it's, it's a great vibe that you guys have. But I guess my question is, um, like how, how many years did you think about starting your own business and how has it been going since you've been open? Great question. Uh, zero. My husband is a very, <laughs> go-getter. Uh, he's Dutch go-getter. Do it. Right. So like I took the course and I loved it and I loved where I was working and I was like, I just want to stay in my safe space here. And he was like, no, we're opening a business. We're doing this. Like, look at your potential. Look at your... So him. Uh, so I did it. <laughs> Thank Dave. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I never thought about being a business owner, especially when I was going to nursing school. I was like, I'm going to help people. I'm going to do that. So it's definitely changed, but I wouldn't take anything back. I'm just grateful that he supported me because I wouldn't have done it without him. Yeah. So. And I know you've really gotten out in the business community in a couple of years because that's how we met was at the Red Deer Leeds executive committee. Yeah. I think it's called, but you're out there networking and stuff too. So how has that been just getting out uh, in the business community? Has that helped uh, get, uh, get the word out a lot? Yeah. So actually I just went there as a guest and met you. Oh. So, and I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. I'm like, Sam, you have to do it with me. You're the um, first person to ever say that about us. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was part of BNI for a year. I, I'm sure you guys have heard of them. Um, it was really hard because the first year we actually opened, we built a house, we had a kid, our first, and COVID. So COVID actually shut us down for about six months that first year. So it was really hard for me to keep up all the goals that B and I required. So that was kind of my first networking, but I found my lawyer. I found like so many people. So I thought now that I have really good staff and I have like employees that I can trust, now I can actually go out and kind of embed myself more into the community. So yeah, it's working out. Well, I know, I know, Aaron, I know you really want to talk about, well, especially Botox. Maybe take us through the, a couple of the, th- well, that was your words, not mine, but uh, like, take us through a couple of the, th- the uh, different treatments that you do offer here. So we first started off just injectables, um, not just, but injectables. So me, myself, Sam and Ronell are all registered nurses that do um, Botox or Dysport. So those are two different types of neuromodulators. Um, don't want to get into 
big detail, but there are, I think, four FDA approved neuromodulators. There was one, but then I heard just yesterday it was taken down. Anyways, um, so neuromodulators relax the muscle. Everybody calls it Botox, but they do have different names. Um, and then dermal fillers like hyaluronic acid. So that's when people are like looking to contour their cheeks or enhance their lips. Um, then we also do skin boosters to rehydrate the area and then Sculptra, which is a PLLA lactic acid. So that is actually inducing your own collagen production, which is a really nice natural filler result. Um, and then in the back now we do like chemical peels, facials, uh, laser hair removal, pigmentation, RF microneedling kind of all of that. So we're trying to become the one-stop shop. <laughs> yeah, more holistic approach to yes. all of your um, anti-aging needs. And do not forget skincare, everybody, mm. because 80% of My your bad. anti-aging is done at home with your skincare. Sunscreen, please. <laughs> Good thing I'm not wearing shorts because I see my tan line. Right? I'm not wearing sunscreen. But I have a question about skincare. Now, so... There is all these TikTok kids at like 12 and 13 doing these crazy skincare routines. When do you want to start building those habits? And when do you need to start adding in kind of the heavier things that old faces need? Like, <laughs> is it healthy when you're 12 years old to be doing a full like eight to 10 product skincare routine? Well, that save you in the future or were no. you you're, okay <laughs> no but i i will say like from another perspective it is like you said routine mm -hmm. like those tiktok kits king boppers <laughs> or whatever they're not using high quality products most right. likely like they're using like shopper sephora or i don't know like an avon brand their medical mm -hmm. ingredients are as potent and they don't deliver product deep into the dermis so it's sort of just like an on the surface like oh it might look cute that's about it so I wouldn't be too worried. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it necessary? No, but it's getting them into a healthy routine for adulthood. So those clients, when they come in, in their like 25, 30, we're going to have a lot easier of a time getting them hooked on good yes. skincare. And they're already going to understand that you can't just wash your face with soap and go and put like one cream on. They're going to get like, oh yeah, vitamin C is good. Retinol is good. Like they're going to understand those concepts. Um, you mentioned the long list of services that you provide. So I'm curious, how much did you know about all those services before and how much have you had to learn since you started and you opened the business? Uh, well, I feel like I pretty much don't purchase anything unless I do it myself, I think. <laughs> so I've done everything. Um, I do a lot of research, obviously, like there's so many companies out there and the reps can be ruthless. So I would just say, obviously, we learn as we go. Um, but we're very aggressive with like, the scientific backing and like, what kind of support system they have. So we just very much focus on making sure that this machine is like in Durham clinics. Is it, you know, is it in somebody's basement? I don't want a machine that's in somebody's basement. I want a machine that's only at doctor clinics, high end clinics. So just doing more research and just not running and buying everything that you see on social media, because there's a lot of bad stuff out there. And yeah. as an employee of Kendra's, her philosophy is education, like huge on education. So every time we do get a device or any type of new product that comes in, she's got people coming in to educate us on it. We've got, you know, like online webinars, like everything like that. So that's really great because I'm background was mental health. <laughs> so I didn't really know anything about the skin because you don't learn about that as much in nursing. So huge learning curve, but she provides such good education at this clinic. So um, it's awesome. So with all the different services, putting on a client or a patient's hat, what does the first initial visit look like? Is it like a consult consultation? Like, I don't really know what I want, but I want to look younger. I want laser hair. What do I like? How does that look, I guess, for a first time client? Yeah. So, I mean, usually when we do our initial consultation, it's they sit in a chair and we just I hand them a mirror and I say, what's bothering you? <laughs> you know, and, wrong with you? <laughs> Every, well, and, yeah. and some people will say like, oh, I hate my eyes or like, oh, I hate these lines here. Like I find older people like this area just they hate, hate, hate. Right. Men, a lot of times it's their eyes. So 
obviously I'm going to view them and I'm going to see what I think they should do, but I'm not going to also attack them for something that might not bother them. Like some people don't mind their forehead lines. They're like, I don't care about these lines. It's my under eyes that bother me. I'm like, then let's focus there. Yes. Would you benefit from a bit of something up here? Yes. But that's when we can like introduce skincare and say like, let's focus on your eyes. But hey, if you put some retinol up here, we're going to get kind of the best of both worlds without insulting you and making you leave being like, oh my gosh, she just told me like, I need to do everything. (laughs) So I would just say like, we don't really attack an area unless they point it out. And then we give them multiple choices, right? So the nice thing is now that we have machines, we can say, okay, for your under eyes, you can do PRP, which is we draw your own blood and we re-inject into the area. So that's going to help with the darkness, discoloration, fine lines and wrinkles. um, And it's natural. So not a lot of concerns, right? And then we can work our way up to fillers. Fillers is a hyaluronic acid. It's synthetic. So when we put it into an area, it's going to rehydrate the area and you'll see results for, let's say, 12 to 18 months. But if you're like, I'm not an injectable kind of person, then you go to the other room and you do either laser facials to help tighten the area or you do microneedling to help um, induce collagen and elastin production. So it's very much uh, just kind of figuring out what the client's concerns are and then also budget like you can do a lot. So it's figuring out if they're at 200 bucks, okay, let's do some Botox or let's go get you on a good eye cream. If they're like 3000, like, okay, let's get you back. Let's do some RF microneedling. So yeah, yeah. consult's different for everybody. Hundred so percent. Not one consult is ever going to look the same as another consult. And sometimes clients come in and they genuinely have no idea what they want. And at that point, I'm usually like, what's your favorite <laughs> part of your face? And then be like, oh, it's my eyes. And, you know, they're starting to get a little bit of sagging here. It's like, well, let's like, like emphasize your eyes. Let's open them up as much as we can because you love your eyes already. So why don't we just like make you love them more? So every consult is going to be different. It's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of education. And like Kendra said, we will never attack something on somebody. It's, you know, what is your concerns? That's why I could never do this job. I don't think I'd have the po What's your favorite part of my eyes? I'd, ooh, really? Oh. <laughs> But it's nice to know, too, that you obviously you don't have to come in and get, get torn apart. But we're going to give you permission right now to, to attack us because we are going to do a little bit, as you called it, bro talks today. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of the four of us, uh, us men, who do you think needs it the most? You're the most dynamic, for sure, <laughs> as you're sitting Dustin. there. <laughs> she said dynamic. That's what I <laughs> or who would show the best results like before and after? I really want you to say the young guy. I, I would say Kevin right. or yeah. Dustin just because um, you guys are doing a lot more movement. Like Ted, your face, you you don't do a lot of like facial expressions, whereas Dustin the whole time is very active. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just said you got a resting bitch face, buddy. <laughs> I, yeah, I might. Yeah, it's held up, so maybe there that's that's why. Yeah, but let's maybe talk about that for a minute because we've been um, working with Red Stag a lot. I've been talking about women being in traditionally male or masculine spaces, and a lot of times when you think about any sort of um, kind of uh, trying to look more youthful and all of you know brighter and all of the things, you think that that's a traditionally female space. So. You know, how do you, I don't know what the question here is, but it's like. Oh, how do you open up the space to more men? Yeah. 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 I'm just, I'm just wondering like, um, kind of giving men who might be listening, uh, kind of permission to come in and get a consultation and see what could be done to give them the results that they want. Because I I just, I think of it so much as a female space, but know that there are a lot of men who can benefit from a lot of the different services you offer, even when it comes to skincare or a chemical peel because they have acne scarring or things like that. So I guess I I don't really have a question. I just want to talk a little bit more about men in Well, do you Do you get a a lot of men or is it again still that obviously probably the market that you're after more. Right. So I would say a lot more females come in for sure. I feel like sound gets more men hmm. for some yeah. reason. And they just left with a dry. <laughs> Wait, you know what? They're like, hmm, Sam, I'll book with her. Enough. Because I do like I do get males in the chair and sometimes they're like, do other guys do this? And they need a little bit of reassurance. But a lot of my cl- male clients are like the guys driving the Harleys. 
UFC fighters, lawyers, like yeah. big businessmen, they're all coming in. So I'm like, those are like, you know, in society, typically you're like, oh, man's man. Yeah. It's like, well, men's men get to treat themselves too. They get to pamper themselves too. And those are the guys that are coming in. Um, so it's for everybody. Yeah. Like you are allowed to love your face. You're allowed to age gracefully. You don't have to suffer with that one mind that drives you your butt crack or whatever, you know, like yeah. 11. You don't have to suffer with that. If it bugs you, get in and do something about it. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do like, I would say definitely more women, but we have a lot of guys too. Yeah. And the odd ones need a little reassurance, but it's, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, looking good's for everybody. What too, like, cause you mentioned you do laser hair removal and I've, I've had that done before. Is that something like you see more men for that maybe? Yeah. Than, so than I would say else? the majority of men usually would come in for Botox, like around the eyes seems to really bother men. So Botox around the eyes are just upper face in general. Tear trough filler, their eyes seem to bother them as they age as well. Uh, and then also like we do a lot of like hyperhidrosis and TMJ. So hyperhidrosis is when you have excessive sweating. So you can do it in your armpits, palm of your hands, your feet. You can really do it anywhere. Like Sam was saying earlier, like even if you put Botox in your forehead, you will decrease the sweat glands in your forehead. So a lot of men will do it for that reason, uh, we do also have a lot of like wives or girlfriends that make their husbands come in. And then once they kind of see what the results are, like their wives or girlfriends will book them appointments. Like I have one client who always books in under his wife because he'll be like, oh, I think I need more Botox. And she'll be like, oh, I'll book you in with Kendra, right? <laughs> so I think a lot of times men think because it's a decent amount of money, that, you know, they'd rather spend it on other things. So that too is kind of hard. But I would say there's a lot more men getting treatments. And once they get it, they realize like how natural and how good they can look without looking like, oh, you get work done, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's just more getting in and doing a, your first treatment and um, totally hair removal, very easy for men. Like you can also do like beard shaping, stuff like that. So that's more. And then, yeah, we do have clients, um, acne scarring, stuff like that. So the chemical peels, the microneedling for men, it's, it's more popular. Yeah. I think a barrier for men is that men don't go around telling each other yeah. that they're getting these treatments yeah. or women, not all women, but most women are more like, we're more open to share. Um, but yeah, a lot of men aren't like sitting at the oil patch and being like, Oh, guess what I did? Yeah. Um, you so look I great. What did you have yeah. done? We, we told everyone. That yeah. 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 So you should. It's a more open conversation. It'll get more popular. I literally have a, a male client that told me he was driving to work with guys in his truck, put it on speaker. And it was like, hi, blah, blah, blah. This is Heavy Beauty Bar. And then he said they all like teased him, but uh -oh. then they all were like, what are you getting done? And they were yeah. actually excited about it. I think like as soon as the conversations open, Men are happy to know that their friends are doing it. Yeah. Mm. Do you guys have like uh, group bookings where you could <laughs> a Botox party? Well, you know from how the early two thousands. You know how you can go get your go get like uh, manicures or pedicures yeah. and all sit together and chat. Would you guys ever do like a group booking for women or men? We have bring... a bestie. Bring your bestie. So bring your bestie. You each get um, ten percent off. Uh, I've done a few Botox parties in the past, and once again, like. Because this is a medication and we are experienced medical, whatever, like industry professionals. Thank you. I don't like to bring us down. Right. Like, so I did definitely used to do those things when I needed to like build clientele and stuff. But now we kind of do it all in clinic. Um, so we do have like if the girls want to do bring your besties and all three of us can be injecting. But we do try to keep it as still professional because it is still a medication. So we don't want to make it look like it's just like, it's nothing. Yeah. Right. So. And then since it's, I guess, a medication, do you ever have patients that, or do you ever see clients that you maybe are concerned they're getting too much, too much done? Uh, Cause I, like I've, everyone's seen those horror horror photos or videos of just, it's people real who are addicted. Housewives. Yeah. Yeah. The real so, housewives yeah. kind of syndrome. Yeah. So do you ever see that or how do you prevent that? that or can you prevent that from happening? Well, we're lucky enough that um, we just say no. So we do know when a client sits in, and most of the time it's not Botox. So that's the medication. And it's usually fillers that people go crazy on, right? When they have those huge lips, that's filler. It's all um, migrating up to your nose. Yeah. And it is unfortunate, but a lot of people have that body dysmorphia where they're just like, oh no, like 
I don't even have any filler left. And you're like, <laughs> what? what? Here's um, a picture from your first appointment. Yeah. Yes. That's why before and afters are so important. Yes. Yeah. That you can refer back and yeah. be like, look at this, look at this. Mm -hmm. No, you are good. You're full. But yeah. like, I say no to people at least once a week. Oh, yeah. So it's all right. Uh, and, and we're allowed to. Like, and I mean, once again, when you're building your name and stuff like that, you, you want to take every client because you need the money, right? But then also, you're like, I don't want my lips walking around out there being yeah. like, oh, Hebe did this. And you're yeah. like, don't, right? So now we're just very much just like, if if that's the look you're going for, there's definitely a clinic that can do it. We're just not going to be them. So it's it's nice that we can do that, but it, it's unfortunate. And I do think bigger cities, like I was even looking in like the UK or whatever, like everybody's just looking <laughs> unique there. Yeah. But that's also because you don't need to be a medical professional to do injectables there. So anybody can do it. Your lash tech can do it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a question I have. If you are looking to find a service provider, what should people be looking for so that they're not getting a fly by night, like a nurse who's taken one course and is ready to start doing Botox parties? Like, what should people be looking for to make sure they're coming to a reputable clinic? Look at your injector. What do they look like? Mm -hmm. If they're overfilled, they are going to obviously think that's aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. So they may want to overfill you yeah. because, and it's fine. Some people look great with a lot of filler. I've tried to make Sam make my lips bigger. And she just won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I would say looking at your injector and also asking them like, okay, so you've been in the industry five minutes, 10 minutes, two, three years. How long have you like, a lot of times it's hard because you have to build clientele. And as a nurse working in the hospital, you make a lot more money than doing just this at the beginning. So, um, you know, if they're like, oh, I've been doing this for two years, once a month. I've been doing this for two years. Like Sam came in hot and she's like, <laughs> She has worked very hard, but she also is like full time. Yeah. Like she was doing five days a week. So you want to find out like what your injector is doing. And I mean, social media, it's annoying, but you can look at it mm -hmm. and you can see like, are they going to conferences? Are they doing education? What are their before and afters looking like? What product are they using? Are they educating me on what I'm getting done? Like we have so many clients that sit in the chair and I'm like, oh, so you had a treatment. What did you get? Well, I don't know what product I think they did here. And I'm like, for what? Like, so yeah. a lot of times, like, it's just good to like, ask your injector, mm -hmm. if they can't answer those things, like, why are you treating me like this? Like, sometimes it may sound annoying, but your answer, your injector should have an answer for you. Yeah. So. And then like most injectors or reputable clinics will have their website, mm -hmm. right? So Hebe has a website, it says our team, you click on it, it will say the courses that Kendra has taken, I have taken, how many years in the industry, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then like you said, look on Instagram, check out before and afters. I know sometimes they're a little misleading at times. We're we're great, I think. We're very <laughs> natural based here. Um, we never like overdo anybody. Um, but yeah, like look at the website, look at their credentials. Technically, you can go on to, so for nurses and doctors, and you can literally go on to like the Carnot website. You can check and make sure that I have an active license. You can see if I've had probations or any type of like um, discretions on my license. So you can really do research if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, and those are good ways to check out where you're going and making sure it's professional and you're getting good care. So just to build off that, not a question, more of a compliment to you ladies in the first, uh, I don't know, what have we been doing this for 20 minutes? Um, I consider myself kind of an average consumer in most areas, but I am severely undereducated in this field and like skincare. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know if I've washed my face with soap before. Maybe that's why I have these crow's feet or lines on my forehead. But, um, I think it's just important for people who are listening the education that you guys provide in the initial consult and as you go through and just what I've learned today, the difference between Botox filler, like, like I'm just so, I thought it was all the same. So I think a lot of people when they look to face and skincare and, and other services you guys provide, it's just come chat with you guys is what I'm hearing. Like just come, come learn more about it. And, and I think you guys from what I've just learned have done a great job with that. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I think building off of that too, do you, do you find, cause I know a, a especially for like us uneducated men who know nothing about this area. What we know about, especially Botox is from like a sitcom or a movie, right? Where there's that stigma around it that no matter if you get Botox once, it's going to go 
go back, that type of thing. Do you uh, have a lot of people coming in with that stigma as well? Or is that started to, to go away now more? Because it does seem like almost everyone I talk to either knows about it or, or, or does have it done. Yeah, I, I mean, even starting in 2017 to now has really changed, especially Red Deer. Red Deer was like, hush, hush, like, we'll sneak you out the back door. Like, we won't tell anybody. Like, I remember getting Botox in Coaldale when I was going to university and they would sneak you out a back door because I was getting six units on my forehead and they didn't want people to know, right? Or I didn't want... Anyway, so definitely it's opened up and a lot of times it will be their first time getting it and they're like, oh, I'm like going to do it and all my girlfriends are going to see and then they're going to decide if they want to do it. So there is still you see social media and unfortunately a lot of it is lies. You do 20 units in your forehead, you're not going to look crazy. Yeah. But um it's just to some people they just kind of assume that like oh I'm going to look like a Kardashian if I do half a syringe in my lips and it's like that is so unrealistic. Like there's no way we could even do that if we wanted to. Um, so yeah, just kind of, once again, just educating. Cause so many clients come in thinking like, like I was saying, I had a client who came in who was like getting mother of the bride in like 13 days. And she was like, oh, well, I heard that it takes five to seven days to kick in. So am I too early? And I'm like, you should have come like a month or two ago because we want to see what your muscles do. We, we need to learn from your muscles. Um, so I'm hoping it all goes well, but, uh, yeah, really coming in and just getting that education because it's not what people think. Like I've probably had Sam's probably done like 10 syringes in my face in the last year, at least. And then Botox Disport, I usually get, we'll say about a hundred or something every three months. And if I think I'll that okay. too, oh, sorry. No, um, <laughs> I was just going to say like, Yes, clients are definitely more informed, but sometimes they're too informed or they think yes, they're yeah. too informed. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of clients now that come in and they're like, well, I need this and this and this. And you're like, no, no. Or my friend gets this, so I need to get that. And you're like, your friend and you have different faces. You know, um, even like we were talking about this morning, I um, I put a before and after of some lips um, and it was like a journey lips from a year ago to now. And it's a huge change. Um, wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. They're a little bit bigger. I think they're beautiful. I wish I could have them. And so are a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So they're messaging me and they're like, can I have these lips? And I have never met them. I've never seen them. And I'm like, long story short, no, because everyone's lips are different. You know, everyone has a different lip. Everyone's going to need a different product or a different amount of product. So um, sometimes the over-education is difficult. So then we're re-educating. But yeah. yeah. Let's talk lips and lip <laughs> flip, lip flip versus filler. And oh, I mean, yes. obviously, <laughs> yes. obviously case by case, but like, is, is a lip flip kind of like the gateway drug to filler or? So lip flips, um, I'm happy mine isn't as aggressive. So lip flips is with Botox neuromodulators, uh, Botox Dysport. Those are the two we use. So when you're doing a lip flip, what you're doing is four to six units on your top lip. So with a neuromodulator, what it does, we inject into a muscle, goes to the nerve ending, and it pretty much tells that muscle like, eh, let's not be as strong. The more we put into that muscle, the more that that signal is blocked. So with your top lip, you use it to talk and smile and all of that. So drink out of, straw. drink out of yeah. straws. So um, mine has kicked in. So yeah. when I smile, my top lip can't tuck. Oh, okay. Like I used to be able to tuck it really yeah. good. So when I smile, I actually can see more of a top lip. So some clients who have an overactive obicularis muscle, when they get it relaxed, they see a little bit more of a lip at rest. And then when they smile, it can't tuck. So that is, yes. 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 So uh, younger clients, people who have gummy smiles, those are clients 40 to $60 ish. Um, you're going to see some results. However, it's going to feel weird. Whistling, sucking out a straw, blowing at balloons feels weird. So when it kicks in for the first like five to seven days after it kicks in, you're kind of like, it just feels unique, right? You're only going to get results for about six to eight weeks. So it's a very nice, but very quick, short, yeah. short, short lived. Okay. But, and then when you're looking at filler, filler is a hyaluronic acid gel like substance we inject into an area to rehydrate contour fill. So the nice thing is, um, 
hyaluronic acid is naturally built or we naturally make it and we also naturally dissolve it. So when we're born, we have hyaluronic acid and that makes us look young and youthful and all of this. Yeah, yeah. And then we have hyaluronidase, which is its nemesis, right? So as we age, our hyaluronic acid starts to deplete and our hyaluronidase starts to take over. So by the time we're 30, we're not producing hyaluronic acid. And if we are, it's very little. And then our hyaluronidase is eating it all up. So when we're re-injecting synthetic hyaluronic acid, it's actually just evening out the playing field. So then your natural hyaluronidase is going to break it down within the next six to nine months. Some people are like, I had filler for two, three years. Yeah, you could. However, naturally, ideally, that we want that hyaluronic or uh, hyaluronidase to dissolve it. Mm -hmm. So you will see results, let's say six to 12 months with lip filler. A lot of people, like we kind of talked about, don't stop and they just Every keep building. Every three months, we're going to keep yes. adding more. Yes. So they don't stop, but say you did half a syringe, you're going to get, let's say four to six months. If you did a full syringe, nine to 12 months. And then after that, you know, you can build if you want, but it is more expensive upfront, but you do notice more results yeah. with filler. Um, and just to be said, half a syringe usually is very underwhelming for 99% of our clients. They come in, they're like, I don't want big lips to start with a half. And then in two weeks, they're like, I wish I did a, a full. little more. Yeah. 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 So. And the lip flip can be more dramatic and like exciting for a client. 100%. For some. Yeah. And then not for others. Like even if you look at Kendra and I, I don't need a lip flip. Yeah. I don't, I don't tuck at all. My lips are quite, and I don't really think I have much filler in them actually, mm -hmm. but I would be more like if I want to. I'm bigger, actually surprised you do have filler. Yeah. I like a, they, I, they I look would say a little great. bit. Last time I got filler was before my wedding last yeah. summer. Okay. So like, I really don't think there's much, much. in there, yeah. anything. But for me, if I want bigger lips, filler is going to get me a yeah. bigger lip. Well, Kendra, <laughs> who has a littler top lip, yeah. a lip flip is actually quite incredible on her. Yeah. It gives yeah. her a lot of lift. It's quite dramatic. But she also has filler too, because we want a little bit more. But right, so different client, different treatment is going to be, you know, give different results. Some people need both, like Kendra. Some people can get away with one or the other, and it's perfect. There will be a test on all of this, by the way, Justin. <laughs> so it's just something I think about yeah. a lot with my lips. <laughs> yeah, that's close it. enough. Yeah, you pass. Yeah. Mm. Quick question too, because uh, before we get too far away from the lips, <laughs> out of the four of us, because I want to ask again, who who would benefit the most? For, I know it's not you. Not me. Yeah, Kevin's out of this one. The three Kevin of us. Kevin is the goal. Yeah, Kevin is. Yeah. Kevin's the after yeah. photo. Who yeah. who would benefit? Like, do from lip filler? Do men get it a lot? Like, do, is that something men care about as much? I think Dustin's would be hard, so I don't want to do his lips. <laughs> yeah. <Why? You're, laughs> just just your anatomy, right? Like, a lip <laughs> flip would be great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think yeah, you could. <laughs> Men do lips, they do chin, they yeah. do everything. I think Red Deer's a little behind. Would you agree? Yeah. Like Toronto, Calgary, that kind of thing. I have done lips on men. I have a few clients that have done lips. One client, it was literally for hydration. A little mm -hmm. bit older gentleman. He had probably your beautiful lips. But then, you know, 15 years later, they're a little deflated. So I didn't add volume. I just hydrated <laughs> his lips. So he <laughs> just looks a little more youthful. Um, but not as common here, but I, I do think it is more common in bigger cities. Mm -hmm. Um, just red tears a little, little different. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do any treatments for, not for me, I'm fine, for but uh, yeah, for yeah. a friend, um, for like the, the double chin, the under chin, like fat. Oh, I'm the friend, I think. No, yeah. you're not. You're not. But uh, I know there are treatments. There are. For that. So um, the most common one is called Belkyra. So it's a deoxycholic acid. I guess I didn't bring this up when we do our treatments. So what deoxycholic acid is, um, you inject it into your adipose tissue and it pretty much blows up your adipose tissue and then your lymphatic system drains it out. So technically it is a permanent treatment. Mm -hmm. Everybody sees different results. So that's why it's a very like love hate treatment. Some people see like crazy, amazing results. Other people, um, it's not as dramatic. So it would kind of depend. So we have this muscle here. It's the platysma muscle. So as we get older, it likes to pull down as well. So if it's our platysma muscle, that's causing that like pull, like me, I can like make a bullfrog. Actually, I don't know. Am I doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very <laughs> impressive, actually. 
<laughs> so that's my muscle. That's not adipose tissue. Right. Whereas another client may not have that strong platysma, but they might actually have um, some fat. Yeah. Right. So it kind of depends on the client. If it is actually their adipose tissue, dissolving it, usually you do three treatments, four to six weeks apart, and it will dissolve the majority of it. It is permanent unless you obviously gain a bunch of weight. And a lot of times it's genetics. Like there's nothing you can do about it. Like genetics just kicks your butt in that area. So even if you gain weight, lose weight, you still have that. So it is a great treatment for those clients. Um, If you're somebody like me who does more of the bullfrog and I pull a lot with my platysma, the Nefertiti neck lift, which is um, a Botox treatment where you pretty much treat the platysma muscle. So you treat all the way along the jawline and then you treat down these bands and it just tightens everything up because as we get older, everything just kind of does this, yeah. right? So tightening that up will just straighten out your jawline a little bit and and it can mask the uh, under the double chin. Have you guys ever gotten like really weird, like what's the weirdest request someone's come in to like maybe fix that they've attempted to fix themselves or... oh. Don't like, fix things yourself. Yeah. That we've <laughs> treated or turned away. Uh, I guess turned away. I guess turned away. That could be either even, or. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say that this, it seems like a weird request, but I don't know if it's that weird, but we've had requests for nipple talks. Oh, yeah. So Kim Kardashian oh. back in the day talked about getting Botox in her nipples. So, of course, yeah, she's an influencer. So then people wanted to do that. So it was a little bit trendy a ways back. Not so much I used anymore. to do that. Yeah. Um, but we do get not always requested right. that. I mean, we we will do it. It's not a big deal. But I mean, it just keeps your nipple basically erect. Yeah. It just keep yeah keeps your n- nipple erect. But I would say there are people like if you want to find it, you can find it. And there are people who find filler on eBay or whatever and get it mm-hmm. injected. And Sam actually yeah. had a client who got filler here, which is extremely high risk um, to go were blind. They, were they yeah. surprised? <laughs> like all the time <laughs> no it would be it, like i don't think it looked <laughs> yeah. aesthetically bad but i don't think she understood like this How injector terrifying is a is? hairdresser and she did it like in her yeah, basement yeah. and mm-hmm. like i i don't need did we end up dissolving like we were quite nervous to dissolve yeah. because i'm like is it hyaluronic acid if we're going in and we're trying to correct somebody's mistake like most of the time we send them back to their provider but unfortunately this was somebody who should not be providing it um so i think that was a discussion with our medical director i don't even recall we if did, we did it dissolved her lips because right. the same product was done on her lips and she had like large noticeable mm-hmm. bumps that were not in her lip <laughs> like yeah. they were outside of mm-hmm. her lip and in her lip and it um you know we got approval we had our medical director look at everything we did like just kind of spot treating because again we don't know where this product came from. Afterward, I literally went on Amazon and put like hyaluronic acid to see if it was a thing. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. can't get it on Amazon. Oh. But we don't know what ingredients are in there, right? So mm-hmm. she actually did end up getting, we got rid of everything on her lips. We didn't touch her eyes. Again, like, you know. It's just too risky. Yeah. yeah. She should go to a dermatology clinic and see like a doctor. They can ultrasound, mm-hmm. um, right? Go a little more in depth. Just like for us, it makes no sense to mm-hmm. take that risk. Yeah when we didn't provide that first service. So, and she understood that she was fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. I did also have um, a client who came in with her own filler um, and it was in a different language. And she was like, no, no, no. It says hyaluronic acid on here. Like, can you inject me with it? And I was like, I kind of like my license. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But she was like, can you just come to my house and inject me? And then she was trying to get me to map out where she should inject so she can go home and inject it. Oh, no. So, um, people need to be aware, like the... If something goes wrong, a vascular occlusion, very rare, but if something goes wrong, your skin becomes necrotic and can die. Okay. So if somebody's putting filler here and it goes under into your eye, you can go blind. And there are studies that show that that happens. So um, it it's just unfortunate that you hear people doing stuff like that because you're like, come on. But yeah. it, I, I mean... It is what it is. And the no education thing, right? Yeah. People don't realize how serious. They don't realize that you need to come in and see practitioners that have had an advanced education, know your facial anatomy, and know how to reverse complications. Yes. Right? So it's just quite scary. And I imagine a lot of it, too, probably comes down to cost because- any beauty treatment, whether you're having your hair colored or getting injections or a facial or whatever, it it's not cheap and it shouldn't be if you are with, if it's too cheap 
it's too good to be true. It's Don't like a tattoo. Yeah. You get what you yes. pay for. Yeah. Um, but I saw you guys also have kind of some options for that with your memberships as well to kind of help mm -hmm. those of us who keep thinking we should have Botox money and then spending it on other things, maybe save up that Botox money. Yeah. So we do have a new membership. Uh, we just launched it maybe a few months ago and it's actually been really good. So it's pretty much just a savings for you. Um, so it's a hundred, two fifty, and four hundred a month. And so, say you do the hundred. So in three months, you have three hundred dollars saved to use towards any of your TB treatments um, or product. So then, say somebody gets Botox every three months, they come in and they're like, "Oh, I already got three hundred dollars off my treatment." Um, and then it also gives them perks with like skincare and stuff like that. So then we can get them to do their at home work right. because skincare also is very expensive. But going to Sephora is also very ex going to Shoppers is very expensive. Yeah. Like anywhere you go is expensive. So it's just understanding like what products you should be using. And there's probably so much like fluff products out there that are doing nothing. Yeah. So say you spend a good hundred dollars, $200 on a cream, but it actually gives you results. So, um, yeah. And then we also do have our apprentice nurse injector. So she's been injecting with us since I think September, October. Anyway, so she's been injecting for quite a while, um, but we still call her apprentice pricing because we're still supporting her through it. So she's also a little bit more affordable, but she doesn't do high risk areas. Um, and then we're always in on the treatment or we're at least um, in the clinic to assist her if she needs it. So then she can grow into being an advanced injector. Yeah, the great thing too about the memberships is with that savings plan, we give you perks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you get like a facial free on us um, so many times a year, depending on the tier of the membership you're in. And then like we're having um, an event June 20th for members only. Mm -hmm. And so it's like an appreciation event. So you get to come and, you know, we're going to spoil yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, because you're a member. So it is nice. Like not only are you just saving, putting money away without thinking about it. Yeah you're also, you know, getting some free little extras. I guess on that note too, because we're we're going to do something interesting today. I don't think we've ever done with an interview and kind of do an inaction thing. I know a couple of us are here to get Brotox. Uh, Aaron's going to get some Botox too. So we'll get to that in a second. So before we do that, just uh, maybe a little more of a plug, like where people can find you. It's a great location here, a great, a great view of the river. And then I know you're very active on social media okay. too. So and website, pretty much a anywhere uh, that uh, someone can get a hold of you. Yeah. So, um, well, we have multiple different Instagrams, but our actual business one is hebe.beautybar. Um, and then our website is www.hebebeautybar.ca. And then, um, yeah, we're open Monday to Friday too. So you can always give us a call and yeah. We're located in Riverside Plaza. Riverside uh -huh. Plaza. Nobody knows where that is, but uh, once you find it, you know. It's the same building as Healthy Smiles. There you go. <laughs> That's how I tell And you. on the south side, too, because the first time I came, yes. I couldn't. I drove around a couple times. The one ways. Until I found it. Uh, yeah, I guess on that note, uh, we could still kind of keep the interview going and keep the questions going. I'm, I'm already in the chair, mm -hmm. so I guess I'm going to go go first. And what's the process? I guess we're obviously going to do before photos which I'm really mad about because <laughs> I have not had a pimple on my forehead in honestly 10 years. And today of all days, I got a It'll little bit of a, a zapper. So you'll, you might get after. credit for getting rid of that too with the after <laughs> photo. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll we'll get going with that. Uh, my one question before though that I was thinking of, because I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going golfing tonight. Like, I don't know that that matters. Are there do's and don'ts? Like once you get once you uh, like get an injection, things that you shouldn't do for a certain amount of time. By the look, it looks like I should maybe cancel my tea time. Huh? <laughs> um, I'm probably a little bit more cautious than other places. But what I always tell people is you cannot lay down for the next four hours. No hot tub, no sauna, no working out today. So <laughs> I was just going to go have a nap. But you have a cart. I think you're okay. Yeah. But I would say like for you, we're doing your forehead. So you can't wear a hat. If you are wearing a hat, you have to wear it really loose. So the idea is we're injecting Botox Disport because we use Disport most of the time into a muscle and we want it to stay in that muscle. So say you wear a hat and you're pushing, mm. that product can move within the muscle, but can move up and down. If it moves up, that's fine. It's just going to decrease sweating, moves down, you get a ptosis. We don't want that. Um, so is that what Frankenstein had? <laughs> Like, Frank, yeah, because uh, he had that big. That's you know, why just why? he was well, also he cut together <laughs> from body parts, so not well, a great example. 
ptosis is? I'm just trying Ptosis? To... So there's different types <laughs> of ptosis. So a ptosis can come from too much Botox in the frontalis muscle or too low. So you're almost like this. Like a and dropped brow. Like a dropped Ooh. brow. Or you can get eyelid ptosis where your actual eye can't open. So that's usually from this area, and then brow ptosis is from the frontalis. So no, and that is very rare. Yeah, <laughs> there it's not very common. No, that those things no, occur. no, no hat, no nap before golf. This is gonna be a tough day. Okay, I got one more question. Since you talked about Frankenstein's drop brow, <laughs> um, I I have like I have a dropped eyelid. I think it's from getting punched in the face too many times. But is there a way to, with Botox, bring that up? Yeah. So the idea oh, behind yeah, neuromodulators yeah. is it does the opposite of the movement of the muscle. So right now, this is what your muscle's doing. So when it's relaxed, it does this. So that's already opening, right? So then when you scrunch your eye, it's a sphincter muscle. So when it's contracted, it does this. So then when it's relaxed, it does this. So treating both of these air muscles are going to help open your eye. Now, some people see more of a dramatic result than others. And I would say it depends on where your lines are showing on your brow. So if you're squinting really hard and you can see lines that are almost like in your eyebrow, that means you're more of a candidate for a brow lift because you have an active muscle up here. Sometimes people will smile. All their lines are down here. You're not going to see as much of a lift because we can only lift the, with the muscle. We can't do anything like this. That's more like surg surgery or threads or something like that. So squint really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Frown really hard. Yeah. Yeah. You can't frown. I forgot. Just, 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 um, so frown. Look at that. there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you definitely would see results. Some people are unrealistic and they want to see surgical results with Botox and we cannot do that. But if you're wanting to just subtly lift the brows, like I have a picture of my before and after, and I literally look kind of like Frankenstein <laughs> before I literally look like Frankenstein before I get treatments because my brows sit so low. And then after treatment, they just sit higher, but it's aesthetically, I don't think looking at me makes a, like, I look they different. Have to be but realistic, right? And that's kind of thing. Like everyone's eyes are different. Like Frankenstein's like that. Like Kendra <laughs> and I have very different eyes, so we're gonna see very different results. She probably would see a better result than me because I'm already more open, mm -hmm. right? So some people have a bit of a hooded eye. Some people are already open. So it really depends on the client, and that's why we will discuss with you what would be the best um, treatment for you and how to get you those results. All right. Well, I guess there's no more putting it off. We'll uh, take a, a real quick break here and get set up. And then I guess we get, almost have a, a demonstration. We'll, we'll see how it translates to an audio podcast. But worst case, go watch the video on YouTube and, and see the magic happen. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm just going to talk about why we chose what product we chose. Um, so like I was saying before, we do use Botox and Dysport. Both are superior products. Botox obviously came out first. So everybody knows Botox, right? Dysport came out a few years later. The main difference is Dysport has more of a potent particle size per unit, meaning it can get to that nerve ending much quicker. So usually in about 24 hours, it's at the nerve ending, whereas Botox can take a lot longer. Because it is more of a potent particle size per unit, um, it kicks in quicker and it also can be a little bit more aggressive. So I find somebody who has young, youthful um, muscles that like has that collagen and elastin to hold the product, um, we like to use Dysport. If we were to um, have a client who's maybe older, has a little bit more of like tissue paper skin or has issues with um, really hooded lids and is older, we would probably do some Botox. So that's kind of why we chose Dysport for him. Um, and everybody kind of likes to get results sooner. So it's just really popular in that sense. Um, so right now, Sam just cleaned the face. So we clean the area with chlorhexidine. If you come in without makeup, that's ideal. If you do, we are going to ruin it. So just know that we have to clean the area. Once we clean it out, we map your muscles. So the glabella region is the 11. So when we frown really hard and we see those two lines, that's usually what people's main concerns are. So those are the corrugator muscles pulling in. On men, a lot of times the Perseris muscle is taking over and that's the line that goes across here. So when we're treating the glabella region, I see Dustin checking himself. <laughs> you, you want a treatment. <laughs> so when, uh, <laughs> when we treat this area, what we're going to do is we're going to see results of it lifting and softening those lines. And then Sam also did the frontalis muscle. Very, very 
common area. Frontalis muscle actually can drop the brows because it is a lifting muscle. So we like to treat higher. That's why she kind of did the no fly zone area. Um, and men just take more units than females because their muscles are stronger. And then crow's feet. <laughs> um, you can see <laughs> with Ted. One for the boys. He actually, when he smiles, you can see that his lines go all the way into his brows, meaning he is going to get a nice brow lift. If you smile really big and you only see lines down here, you won't see as much of a lift. So Sam's going to do treatment now. All right. So it's going to just feel like little mosquito bites. It, so it's quite like comfortable. Eyes closed better? You, eyes open? Keep your eyes running. closed just because okay. I feel like then you don't see me coming. No. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you when I'm... I'm going to tell you when I'm... Oh, yeah. That is... You're right. I, yeah. Um, these areas are quite comfortable. I'd say eyes are sometimes a little more sensitive. You can obviously bruise and bleed when it comes to treatments. I would say this area is the highest bruising area. Usually we typically don't see a ton of bruising on top, but anytime you get a needle in the face, you can bruise. I'll just say I got a fight. That's right. Nice and tight. Uh, so here's just a little needle. poke. Yeah. yeah. So the treatment itself is very, How was that? very I did, honestly Nothing. did not even know you did that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So some of them are a little bit more pinchy than others. Like that one might have been a bit more pinchy. So I see Ted's kind of a little flush in the cheeks. Is there, can we, can we clean that up at all? So there's multiple things you can do. Um, I would say if you're looking for a quick fix, you can actually put Botox. So um, Botox, Dysport, putting it in different layers of the skin will do different things. So a lot of times if you're flush in the area, you can hyper dilute that. So right now, all of our product is one to one. So you can hyper dilute it like even four or six to one and just kind of flood the area with little injectables. And that is going to kind of close up um, the glands. So then it's not as red. Short term, not going to um, be a forever thing, but it's something to do over the summer. Uh, we also have a redness solution product. A lot of people have rosacea and red cheeks. So using a product that has um, ingredients that will help with that is also really popular. And then lastly, laser doing a laser facial where they can actually go in and the laser is actually really good at finding the pigmentation or the vascular area that needs to be treated. So He'll, he'll most likely see best results with um, laser, but all of those are good options. How is that so far? Oh, it's fine. Yeah. And she's almost done. Oh. So it's a very, very quick treatment. Um, a lot of people just get worked up because it's the unknown. And it's also, you know, you don't see any results. You're spending however much money and you walk out and you see nothing but bug bites. <laughs> um, so it, it can throw people off a little bit, but once you... You know, once you start to see the results in about five to seven days, within two weeks, he'll see full results and he'll be hooked. So will there be any like post between the now and the seven days? Is there any pain or is it just? That's a good question. So I wouldn't say pain. Um, some people, it can induce a little bit of a headache. So if you are prone to headaches or migraines, these are two areas that we treat for the migraine treatment. So that's also what we do here is medical um, Botox. So these two areas obviously can induce a migraine. So when it's relaxing, sometimes it can cause a little bit of fogginess or a little bit of a headache the next day. Take a Tylenol. Um, the main downtime is more bruising and swelling, but that's also very short lived. And I don't think you bruised him. Nope. So and that is the whole treatment. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. So it'll be. You look like a new man. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks before it's fully kicked in, he's going to notice de decreased movement over the next um, like seven to nine days, but two weeks is full effect. So if he does still have movement that he's not happy with, he can come see us in two weeks and we will do a touch up and then get him the results he wants. And so seven days is probably the best time to get a new profile pickup on those apps or? 12. 12 days? Okay, you heard it. Yeah. You heard it here first. There you go, you're yeah. done. Perfect. Oh. That was it. Um, all right, well that again, we just did, did the treatment. Uh, someone who's gotten his back waxed a whole bunch, uh, like laser hair removal, even like a massage, that was the least painful kind of, uh, I guess, treat yourself type of treatment that I've had. So yeah, that's anyone who I guess is afraid of needles, that was not bad at all. Am I allowed to smile? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that my treatment is uh, done, we're going to go offline here. Uh, the athlete is and Aaron are going to get some treatments as well. But, oh, actually, don't go anywhere. I got to grab something before I wrap up this interview. Yes. We don't come empty handed. No. We should. We should. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> All right. Well, as a thank you for the support of our podcast and making us all look younger and, and more beautiful, we did notice there's a, a something missing out front in the lobby. So we wanted thank to you. give you... <laughs> no, this will probably be... We noticed there's some empty space in your garbage or recycling bin. Uh, so we do want to present you with this a limited edition. There's actually like 500 of these that we can't sell. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, uh, firefighter calendar and... Uh, it's I looked, awesome. I looked right, into, right into the center of Lund there. I shouldn't do that. But uh, uh, we don't blame you if you don't put that up. But uh, it, it's a we conversation will, piece nonetheless. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Uh, so again, uh, Kendra, Samantha, thank you so much for doing this. We learned a, a lot today. A new experience for a lot of us too, for me uh, getting getting the treatment and while we're doing the interview. So again, uh, Hebe Beauty Bar, uh, we already knew coming in, there was, there was so much great word of mouth uh, about your business. And uh, now that we're here and we see it, yeah, definitely come in here and check it out. And uh, yeah, thank you again to both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear.